Hi, I'm Judy Tayabji. Welcome to Tayabji. Today, the issue that we're discussing comes under the heading of justice. And today, we're talking about family rights. We'll also talk this week about sexual assault, the legalization of hemp and marijuana, and then in an upcoming show, the Divorce Act. Today's show about family rights is centering on the role of grandparents. Most of us take it for granted that when a baby is born into a family, grandparents have responsibilities. And we just assume that there are rights that come with those responsibilities. But according to the laws that are in place right now, that, that's not the case. And many grandparents are trying to make sure that they can have a role in their grandchildren's lives, especially if that child is uh, either in a divorce under the Divorce Act, under the Family Law Act, or under the Act that protects children and families. Let's look at this report prepared by Lee McKenzie, Check Six, Re Check Six reporter. I want to stay with my Nona like others. They've marched on Parliament Hill and on the B.C. legislature, grandparents wanting access or custody to their grandchildren after divorces, separations, and interventions by social services. My son is dead now, and I am very much against ever losing my son's only child, my granddaughter. The ministry took her, and they're putting her up for adoption, and I have been cut. Um, I have one more visit, maybe. There are four million grandchildren under the care of grandparents in North America because the real parents aren't fit caregivers. The Children's and Families Ministry brought in a new policy a year ago. It says the ministry must make it a priority to place children with relatives or with an Aboriginal family if the child is Aboriginal. But the best interests of the child must come first. But some grandparents say their experience with the ministry makes them question if the interests of the child are truly being met. Back after a quick break with a representative from the Grandparents' Rights Association and a grandmother who's fighting for custody of her child and your calls. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by CPAC 1070, Victoria's news authority. I still remember getting my first candy from my grandfather. It was Werther's Original, and I was four. I'll never forget that first taste. Sweet and creamy and just plain good. I felt I was really somebody special. Now, I'm the grandfather. And what else would I give my little grandson but my Werther's original? He's somebody special, too. Say hello, Jazz. She loves to hide in the craziest places. Jazz? <laughs> How did you get in there? But she always comes out when it's time for whiskers. She prefers whiskers to any other cat food. She just loves new whiskers lemon rice. Bite-sized pieces, real meat, they're perfect. It helps keep her coat healthy and shiny. For a healthy, shiny coat, try new Whiskers Lamb and Rice. Like all Whiskers products, it's developed with the vets at the Waltham Center. Whiskers make friends for life. <sighs> new Purina Chicken Meal and Rice Formula Cat Chow. It's as nutritious as specialty foods like Science Diet Feline Maintenance. But how will your cat like it? Purina Chicken Meal and Rice Formula chow, 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 chow. It helps you feel so fine and gives your fur that shine. Meow, baby. We were always poor. I always worked. So did my dad. When we got married, those were different times. You didn't make a living. You were trying to make a life. Things are different now. It's harder. But we always found the time to save. So I tell my kids, you start now. Some of them listen. Call now for your free Altamira RSP information kit. It can help you take control now. Once you've started, you're on your way. Altamira. We take it for granted that grandparents have responsibilities, but do they have rights? Under current federal and provincial laws, the answer is no. Some grandparents are fighting to protect their grandchildren, and they need rights to do that. We're joined in studio with, by Eric Turner, who's with the Grandparents' Rights Association. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. And also Catherine, a grandmother who is actually fighting with your co-grandmother for custody of your grandchild. Yes. 
So thanks for joining us. And actually, this show follows last Monday's show where we were talking about child protection. But now we're talking about the issue of justice. I want to start with you, Eric. Why would we even need a Grandparents' Rights Association? Presumably because uh, life has changed a lot. 30% um, of children in Canada no longer have, uh, are no longer living with their own parents, either of them. 30%? 30%. Wow. And nearly 50% are not living with both parents, in other words, have one parent only. Right. And it seems that the entire family structure has changed. Right. In which case, grandparents perhaps have an increasing role to play. Or maybe they have and more can to play it And want to play it. Right. And there are so many people who would like to do that. And they're having difficulty in getting them. Right. Um, either because they're frustrated with family relations, or because they're frustrated with social services, or because they're frustrated with the legal system. Right. And before we go to Catherine, I want to uh, tell you that the lines will be open in about a minute at one 383 6036 and we'll be taking your calls to our guests, or if you have stories of your own you'd like to share. Um, Catherine, in your case, uh, you have a situation where you're the uh, grandmother. It's yes. your son who's, who's uh, the father of the I'm baby. the maternal grandmother, yes. Right, and you and the maternal grandmother are saying that you'd like to take over custody of your granddaughter. Is that right? Grandson. Grandson. Uh, yeah, the ministry has apprehended our grandson, so we feel that it is the role of the grandparents to step in and provide the care. That it, he's in foster care and he's doing very well. But at the same time, that should be family that's providing that care when there's family that's made themselves available to do so. Right. Um, instead, there's boundaries and blocks put in your way so that you cannot do what I see as my grandmother's role if my children are not capable for whatever reason of fulfilling their parenting role. Right. Then as a grandparent, I feel that's part of my role as a grandparent to be available to provide that love and support and security. But in the case where your grandson was uh, in need of protection, I mean, was, the ministry, yes. we, we've had stories and stories where the children have been in danger and nobody's taken any action. Right. So here's a case where the ministry do move in because they thought your grandson was in need of protection. Surely they would have phoned members of the family first. No. To, okay, so you're saying no. they took them in and then they, what, they handed them over to a foster family? He went into foster care and although from the beginning we have also been part of the process of making the ministry aware of the difficulties that were going on for this child. Um, so it's not like we were strangers and unknown to them. We had gone through all the channels of You mean you were some of the people saying the child's in danger? Yeah, we were the first one in line standing there saying, you need to provide services here. We've been trying actually since the baby was born to work cooperatively with the ministry, with the parents, to provide a safe and protective environment for this child. Right. Um, and in the beginning, we were told that we were basically over-concerned first-time grandparents. Oh, I see. And then it went from that to worse, and then uh, you, you sound like you've heard that before, Eric. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> okay, why don't you share some of your experiences with us? Well, there are, oh, there are quite a few experiences of that type. I think much of the problem, actually, is that people have such difficulty, um, difficulty getting together and uh, get nervous about it. Right. and get tense about it. Right. Uh, both my wife and I were brought up in very conventional families, and uh, I, I think we sort of assumed that our own relationship with our grandchildren was Would going be to be much same the same as, as we had experienced. Your grandparents. That's right. And we found it rather disturbing when, after a divorce, we were concerned about, about one grandchild right. who uh, appeared to be a little at risk. Perhaps there was a shortage of uh, parenting skills, Right. And um, when the child was losing weight and getting to school late and all this sort of thing on a frequent basis, we got a little worried. We got involved. Now, why wouldn't you then just to deal with the parents directly? Well, that's what we tried to do. Right. And in fact, we have. Okay. Um, oh, that's what, how it eventually resolved itself. That is how it resolved itself in the okay. long run. Okay. And what it amounts to, I think, every time is if you can avoid confrontation mm -hmm. and get into some sort of conciliation, it does ultimately work. At least it has done in lots of cases. It has in ours, and I've had at least three phone calls in the last month from people who have, have got over it, have managed it that way. And but I find them to be, they set the situation up to be adversarial. Between you and your Between son? Between you mm -hmm. and the family, the, the child, the ministry, um, you end up, for most, in most cases, you end up having to seek legal counsel. Well, right. once you start bringing lawyers into the picture, you're getting an adversarial position. Okay. 
So Yeah, and that's, yeah. of course, been the comment with uh, family law, period. Um, a couple of things. We're going to go to the phone lines in a minute. If you are on hold, uh, please remember that if you're sharing your story, to try to not mention last names or even first names of your grandchild. Just say my grandson, uh, my grandchild, or if it's your niece, cousin, whatever. Just mention the relationship because in many cases you have courts to think of and the privacy and confidentiality of the child. Um, in addition to that, for those who are watching who are a little bit unclear of the process, there are three laws that govern children and families in Canada. One is federal. It's called the Divorce Act. There's a new one coming, but right now there's still no, no real changes to uh, custody and access. They're dealing more with maintenance, uh, with, with uh, money being paid. Uh, there are also two provincial ones. One deals with children in need of protection, which is now through the new Ministry of Children and Families, and the other one deals with families who have to go through the courts, and that's the Family Relations Act, which doesn't have any uh, reference to kinship. So I'm going to go talk to Suzanne and Victoria. Go ahead, please. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm calling regarding just to sort of talk about the child and family services. Right. Whereas when they do take the kids, they do not um, place the kids with family members. Right. They go to foster homes first, and then they look into other families to be um, looked upon as they investigate and see if they have a safe home for them or what have you. Right. And um, just about the other thing with, with the grandparents, sometimes... Um, there is grandparents that are out there caring, but then other times there's grandparents that can use this system as well. Right. Okay. Well, those are, are, are good comments. Um, I think that's probably what you've found as well. Oh, sure. It seems odd, though, because you think that when the government gets involved, that the, the first place they're going to go is to family members. There's a savings in costs, because if you go to a foster family, um, there's a lot more money involved, usually. Well, I know, and they don't, in cases that I'm aware of, in, in our case in particular, and from talking to other grandparents, in a similar situation, the families are the last means of resort, as opposed to the first. Um, the other issue is, is there's, they treat the whole thing as a privacy issue. Right, which means that in a way, they, they have less to reveal than if you're going through the courts, and if you were going... Well, they're not obligated to reveal to anything. the courts. Like, for us to go and apply for custody of our grandson to take this issue to court, the Social Services Ministry is not required to disclose any of the information that led up to the apprehension of our child. So no one can tell if it's going to be warranted or if there, what the danger was. Right, and then we can't ask information. They say, well, that's birth parents' privacy. Right. And although your, child, your grandchild may have been apprehended through the ministry, um, the birth parents can still say to them, we don't want the child going to family. Right, and, and then, so and then, then the child doesn't go. So Even though the law says otherwise. I'm going to go back to the lines. Uh, we have a call from Surrey. That's you, line three. Oh, hi. Hi. Yeah, my question is actually about how I can protect my, grand, my, my daughter from the grandparents. Awesome. I have, um, my mother actually wants to see my granddaughter, but alone, and she, you know, strictly enforces that she wants her overnight for weekends, etc. And I don't want that to happen because I think there was uh, sexual abuse in my past by my mother, and I'm wondering what kind of rights I have to protect my granddaughter, my daughter, from her, because she keeps threatening me with, well, this grandparental rights, I'll take her from you, you know, I'll be able to have her alone. Okay, so. okay well, that's an interesting question. Uh, first of all, I should tell you, caller, uh, that um, the grandparents' rights are not entrenched in law, which is the problem that we're, I mean, it, it, they're entrenched only in the <laughs> Child, Family, and Community Services Act. And although it's entrenched in law there, that only deals with children who've been apprehended by the Ministry of Social Services. So under the Divorce Act or the Family Relations Act, which deal with all the other children, there are no references to grandparents' rights, which is what the, the two guests today are fighting for. Um, in addition to that, it sounds like you should talk to a, a family court counselor, and you'll find that person in the blue pages under Attorney General. Um, that, and that's something that a lot of people don't realize. Is you, they're very busy, but family court counselors are someone um, you, know, you can deal with. With our grandson, what we're concerned about with the ministry's involvement in the position that they have taken recently is that the ministry, first of all, it took them 15 months of aggravated phone calls and complaints before they did anything. So what they've done That's is... That's a long time for you to be about worrying. An we're so talking, you're thinking, oh my gosh, is someone feeding the child? Is the child safe? Have they fallen down the stairs? But is someone going to meet his needs? And, and so when yeah. the ministry is, that does begin to act, you know, you've been going to them and sharing them with them everything that you possibly think might be able to help these two become parents, and they're not. 
And then, of course, the worst part is when they finally take your baby away from a dangerous situation, it doesn't come. No, and, and although we're really relieved that we know that our grandchild is no longer at risk because right. he's in a foster home, and we're very relieved for that, and we're very relieved for the care that the foster parents provide. Right. But then I think it then becomes a family issue again. So this ministry is saying the family unit is ever so important, right. and yet they seem to be going out of their way to perpetuate child abuse and keep families in strife. That's pretty strong stuff. Uh, let me just uh, have yes. you make a quick comment to close before the break. I would for me. Yeah. Um, I think you have brought up one point which is very significant, and that is the enormous amount of time, both reaction of ministry and the legal process. Right. It, take, take. it can take years. It takes a long time, and Junior's growing up. Right. I mean, this is the an most urgent formative situation. years of the children. Yes. Yes, in yes. fact, the law that was brought in in 1994 made specific reference to timeliness. We're going to take a quick break, mm -hmm. then we're back with your calls. You might want to write the number down, 1-888-383-6036. Uh, the lines are jammed, but there'll be room. Back with your calls in a sec. Tayamshi is brought to you in part by Metro, Lexus, Toyota, Victoria, and Duncan. The calm of midday is suddenly torn by a plaintive cry. I can't take it anymore! As yet another British Columbian decides to leave his bank and join a credit union. Your bank isn't going to change. Maybe you should. Let me understand this. If I'm in the middle of shooting, and you yell car, then the goal doesn't count. That's the rule. But I already took the shot. Doesn't matter. But I already took the shot. That's the rule. I didn't make it up. <sighs> so what do you think, in the NHL they yell car? Real goalies don't yell car. What? I can't believe you finished them. I'm sorry, buddy. That's the rules. I didn't make them up. <laughs> Kellogg's Frosted Flake Cereal for kids of all ages. They're great. Dad, did you have any friends when you were a kid? Yeah. What good are stylish frames if they're too heavy to be comfortable? LensCrafters has these new lightweight titanium key frames from Luxottica. These weigh about 40% less than other metal frames. These are Luxottica titanium keys, and these are regular metal frames. Look at the difference here. Isn't that great? They're wow. much lighter. Yeah. The titanium P frames are fashionable, they're comfortable, they're lightweight, and very durable. They're the kind of high-tech solution I need to satisfy my customers. Wow. I love seeing them smile when that happens. Lens crafters, helping people see better, one hour at a time. You might think your BC Ford and Mercury dealer has a lot of explorers now, but believe me, these things are going to be gone. This fully loaded XLS, for instance, is going for a price you will not believe. Sure is, Lindsay, because right now, a fully loaded XLS Explorer is going for just $366 a month. So you'd better not hang around, because these explorers won't be. He's not kidding. The Great Explorer Clearance starts at $366 a month, ends March 31st. Are you curious about credit unions? Make the call of the wild, one i switch And find out how easy it is to make the move. The Savings and Credit Unions of British Columbia. We're talking about family rights, especially grandparents' rights, and we're going to start with Port Coquitlam and Sherry. Sherry, you're on the air. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, actually, um, my, my point about the grandparents' right is usually if... Uh, a parent is unfit, or if a parent can't parent, usually it's because of what's in their own backyard. I mean, I've been dealing with this myself for the past 10 years, fighting my own parents for my children, right. and they have been allegedly abusing them for quite some time, and nothing gets done. They've denied me access, even though it's Supreme Court ordered. I mean, and I don't know what to do anymore, and I'm a parent. I have a four-year-old child in my care, and Social Services believes I'm a good parent, but for some reason, my parents have more control over my children than I do, and they abused me while I was growing up. Now, are you saying that your parents currently have custody of the other children you have? Oh, yes. Okay, so that's, a, that's an interesting comment. Um, do you ever hear that, uh, people who say that um, if a parent, you know... Oh, yeah, sure. Children? That's true. Just because you're the grandparents does not necessarily mean you're the healthiest person to be raising that child. Right. I mean, it could be anyone within the family structure. All we're trying to say is that look at the whole family unit, and maybe the family is not the healthiest place for that child to be. Right, and in the case with this uh, particular caller, she may want to look at, at um, trying to get her order enforced. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, access oh, yeah, orders it, are really there's, hard. There's inequities and injustice all the way on uh, through the system. Part of the problem is the system is so cumbersome and so expensive. Okay. 
Okay, let's take another call. We're going to talk to Sandy and Duncan. Hi. Hi, I have a uh, question for Catherine. Um, I was just wondering, um, I really believe that all pa grandparents or anyone should be screened just due to the fact that how do social services know that you haven't had kids yourself and that we're in the same situation? Right. Well, okay. Oh, no, I agree. Good, they good should question. be looked at. But unfortunately, what they're not doing is looking at the families. They're not giving them that option. They're just blanketly saying, no, the child's in protective services now, and that's all that's necessary. I think it's important for people to know, too, that actually um, the minister at the time, Joy McPhail, drew up a bill that said that families have to be the first avenue to look at, and they haven't always followed that. No, because they, right. they, 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 they don't even send someone out to, to assess whether or not you should be the person providing that care, or if foster care is the best place for that child. I mean, right. if it's a child with a lot of uh, special needs or um, requires a lot of services, depending on your community. I might live in a community so small that support services aren't available to that right. child. In which case you have to look at the needs of the child. child We're yeah. going to talk to line five. Diane from Campbell River. Hi. Oh. Hello. Yeah, your turn. Yes, I'm really glad that, to hear that you're addressing this issue. Um, I've been dealing with it for two and a half years. Um, my ex-daughter-in-law has taken the children, and I don't know where they are, and I have no access to visitation rights. So you don't know if they're still in the province even? No. No, and, I, and she might be under this witness protection program. Oh, dear. Yes, because of my son's um, involvement, and uh, he's presently in, incarcerated right now. Right. But I have done nothing to the children, and mm -hmm. I've always tried to be an upstanding grandmother, and, and I really want contact with them, and I don't know where to start looking mm -hmm. or how to go about it. Okay, well, thank you for your call. I think that brings us to um, let people know about the Grandparents' Rights Association. Yes, and now, Eric, you're in the mm -hmm. Victoria chapter. Right. And there's also a Vancouver association? The association is in Vancouver. We are just um, a support group associated with them. Right. Uh, I guess I can give up the phone number? Oh, sure. Okay, so for those of you who would like to know how to get hold of the Grandparent Rights Association in Vancouver, which, by the way, can also give you the phone number for Washington State, uh, if, you're, if you're watching from there, uh, the office phone number is 604-273. 4726 in Vancouver. They're probably mm -hmm. listed in the book, aren't they? That's right. Okay, yeah. great. And now we'll go back to the phone lines, and we are with Pat in Victoria. Hi, Pat. Hi. Um, I can sympathize with your guest. Uh, I got my grandson by a court order ex parte. Right. And um, what happened was he was put at considerable risk, and I had called the ministry several times, and they didn't do anything. Right. So you had to go to the court. I had to go to the court. Now I have to prove my allegations and prove why I did this. And right. it's going to be a long, drawn-out battle. And I'm sure it's not free. Well, that's not the point. The point is I haven't been able to talk to my daughter, and it does put a big rift in the family when, when sure you can. have to go to the court. And... I had to choose, and ultimately, my grandson could not defend himself okay. and protect himself. Thank you for your call. I mean, that's, I guess, the other part of it is, um, mm -hmm. I mean, in your case, Eric, you managed to resolve things by talking, yes, it, talking it out through your family. Yes, we did. But at first, it must have been pretty tense. It was, and there are certainly quite a lot of people we meet in the Grandparents' Rights Association who uh, have gone through a very long experience with the courts, and yeah. are very expensively. I mean, it can be $10,000. Oh, uh, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. Yeah, it can be quite expensive. You don't know where it's taking you. And, uh, yeah. and the minister, on the other hand, has those has unlimited resources, resources to yeah. lawyers. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're going to talk to Donna in North Vancouver. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, uh, I would like to address my comments to the lady that you have. Right. On, uh, I am a widowed grandmother, and I have permanent custody of my three grandsons. It was not easy, and they did go into foster care in the beginning. Right. But... You have to go to court and get a good. You have to get a good lawyer and go to court to get them. So you had to go through the courts and fight the ministry. Yep. Yes, wow. I did. Yeah. Okay. And I had to prove that I was able and and everything and go through the court process to get them. Wow. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Um, We're I've very willing to do that, but what the point I'm trying to make is is that we shouldn't have to be made to go into that position where we have to fight them on a court battle with our grandson, he's an infant. The longer that he's kept in a foster home and away from family, the more of the strangers his family becomes to him. 
Right. We're not talking an older child who has family roots established. This is a baby. baby, And the longer he stays in foster care, the more difficult it becomes for us to remove him from foster care. Unfortunately, the courts look at it. If a child is in foster care, he's in protective services, that he meets the criteria. And they'll also see some bonds developing, which is only natural, and you want your... And then to move him becomes another trauma we add to his life. Which you don't want to do. We don't really want to do that. Right. We would rather negotiate with the ministry and work to resolve this as opposed to being put as adversaries and go into a courtroom. I don't think that's healthy for him either. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, It's an adversarial system right now, and that's all we have Mm -hmm. to work with. I'm just going to uh, take a minute to give you the phone number again in Vancouver at 604-273-4726. And I want to let you know that coming up on CKNW's Fanny Kiefer Show at 2, design expert Jane Lockhart tells you the do's and don'ts of painting your home, which colors will help sell your house faster and dispel some of the decorating and painting myths at 2 o'clock on CKNW, which is 980 on the AM dial. Thank you so much for everyone who's phoned in. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all the calls. We'll be back in just a minute with my opinion. New Purina Chicken Meal and Rice Formula Cat Chow. It's as nutritious as specialty foods like Science Diet Feline Maintenance. But how will your cat like it? Purina Chicken Meal and Rice Formula. It helps you feel so fine and gives your fur that shine. Meow, baby. An idea is a fragile thing. Sort of like your money when it comes to investments. I figure the object is not only to keep what you've created, but grow it by making the right investment decisions. Sometimes you need a little help to do that. That is if you want a little peace of mind. Well, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I know what I like. And I sure like the new Quaker Fruit and Oatmeal Bars. Real fruit filling in a crust with real Quaker oats. And since we've discovered the new Quaker Fruit and Oatmeal Bars, well, the grandkids seem to like my stories a whole lot more. Grandpa, we like your stories, but can we have another bar, please? Well, sure you can. You see what I mean? New Quaker Fruit and Oatmeal Bars. The goodness of Quaker in every bar. If home is where the heart is, follow your heart to Spring Home Show 97, Victoria's biggest of the year. From February 28th through March 2nd, see the latest, greatest, newest innovations for every area of your home. Get free advice from over 500 experts. See over 40,000 square feet of special home show pricing and do some comparison shopping all under one roof. And for the kids, there's Cinema Zoo, an exotic reptile and insect show. Spring Home Show 97, sponsored by Columbia Fuels, runs February 28th through March 2nd at the Memorial Arena. So come on in, make yourself at home. Premier Glenn Clark has made history twice by being BC's youngest Premier and by winning a second term for the New Democratic Party. He's controversial, he has a slim majority. What does the future hold for the province from his perspective? Last week we heard about children who were in need of protection and weren't getting it. This week we hear about children who are in need of protection and when the ministry takes over, they lose touch with some of their family members. But the biggest problem is in the structures that we've built to deal with families. Families by nature are a group of people who could have very different interests and very subjective interpretations of caring for children. When you get a ministry involved or when you get the courts involved, the timelines become very long. Everything becomes messy and expensive. And often, in order to win at any of these processes, you have to fight from an adversarial position. This just entrenches the conflict. It's never in the child's best interest to pit parents and grandparents against each other. What we really need is a system that works for the child by making sure people can negotiate. That's always in the child's best interest. I'm Judy Tayabji, and that's my opinion. What's yours? 